back to the show. The short, sharp shock of a Trump presidency has sparked a new American fitness craze, walking slowly while lifting a one pound weight. <laughs> Most of us have no experience with creative, sustained protest, so we sent Amy Hoggart to get a few tips from some folks who have been resisting oppressors ever since the Roman Empire. Last summer, my country voted to fuck itself. The UK has voted out from the European Union. Oh, shit. Luckily, I'm a dual citizen, so I got on a plane and moved to America, land of the free and home of the... Donald Trump wins the presidency. Shit. But we can't give up yet, because there is one place where this asshole did meet his storybook ending, and that place is Scotland. Once upon a ten years ago, a beast from the west came to Scotland and wandered into the untouched dunes of Aberdeenshire, declaring it for himself. We're building the greatest golf course anywhere in the world. Before he could grab them by the peat bog, the Benedonald professed his love to Scotland. My mother was born in Stornoway. I love the people, I love the Scotch. I'm Scotch myself. It's Scottish, you plonker. And with the false promise of 6,000 jobs, the Scottish government was seduced, and his course grew and grew. I'm an artist, and this is probably the greatest piece of canvas that anybody's ever worked on. Ugh, why are they always failed artists? But there was legend of a man who lived next to the golf course and refused to sell his land. A farmer who invented the art of pissing off Trump and rocking a woolly jumper. Michael Forbes. I met him once. Yeah? Just been the beach here, come over the dunes, and about half a dozen bodyguards. And the first thing he said was, what's this what land worth, $25 an acre? This is in your fucking dreams, I said. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing could make you sell your land? No. I sussed him out in 10 seconds. He was an asshole. The only regret I have is I didn't knock him on his ass when I met him. This drove the Banshee so mad that he lumbered in front of some TV cameras to start wailing. I look at Mr. Forbes and his disgusting conditions. Mr. Forbes lives in a pig-like atmosphere. It's a slum. I mean, it's horrible the way he maintains it. Did you feel really hurt when he called you a pig? I was actually laughing about it. And so was my mother. She thinks he's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> I love pissing him off. <laughs> he's a compulsive liar. That's what he is. You just keep calling him a liar. Yeah, and it's bound, it's, it's bound to hurt someday. During the election, I was calling him a liar because I was part of this like, secret Facebook group. Mm -hmm. I don't think it made a massive impact. But rather than preaching to the choir, Michael painted it on the side of his shed. This enraged the beast even more, and he sent the government to seize Forbes's land. But the farmer's fight had inspired the villagers, like our next hero. Here's Trump threatening to seize Michael Forbes' land, so I offered to purchase a small part of it. Why would you purchasing it stop him from seizing it? At that time, I was a researcher in, Ant in Antarctica, and so if they wanted to pur purchase it from me, they'd have to come and see me about it, 9,000 miles away. Bested by a seal spooner, Black Donald gave up and moved on to his next fight. When Scotland announced plans to build turbines off the coast of his golf course, Trump charged into Parliament to tilt at the windmills. They are so unattractive, so ugly, so noisy, and so dangerous that if Scotland does this, I think Scotland will be in serious trouble. Where is the clinical evidence? Not an opinion. Well, first of all, I am the evidence. <laughs> Riding off that laughter, our next hero, Parliament member Patrick Harvey, took his stand. I tweeted a, a picture from the end of life of Brian poking fun at him, and I just added these little speech bubbles saying, I'm the evidence, I'm the evidence. Wow, nailed it. How many retweets and favourites did it get? Uh, I think it's had uh, quite a number since then. That number? is 52. Yet somehow that was still enough to anger the brute. I was astonished to receive uh, a letter telling me Donald Trump was accusing me of blasphemy and complaining to the Parliamentary Standards Commissioner. Blasphemy? Is that because he's legally God? Well, Donald Trump accused me essentially of offending the whole of Christendom. The trolling only continued because when Trump lurched out of Parliament, he bumped into this brave knight. I found myself outside the Scottish Parliament behind him at one point and I had a balloon in my hand and took a shot. I ballooned Donald Trump. I rubbed the balloon on his head and his hair stood up. It is amazing that it reacts so chemically similar to real hair. Isn't it amazing? I don't have many tips for the people of America, but if they find themselves behind Donald Trump yeah. with a statically charged balloon, take your chance. 
from there, the whole country joined in the fun. They showed up to protest, brought some very subtle signs, and his neighbours started flying Mexican flags. This one lady was even arrested for urinating on the course, but in retrospect, he was probably into that. Yet somehow Trump still thinks he's Scotland's golden boy. I have a great relationship with the people of Scotland. Most neighbours love us. I hit the pubs to hear what Trump's Scottish neighbours really think. I think Donald Trump's the biggest ball bag in the world. He's an idiot. He's a spoiled baby. A walloper. My cute face cunt. I'm a ball bag. What's it mean? Well, you're the skin that holds in the testicles. Just the sack. That's it, you're just the sack. You're oh, funny. Just by tits. Just a bit of a wank. Slimy, greasy. He's a fucking prick. He's a nerf. Donald Trump is a cunt. That's right. That's very right. As fun as it is to shit on Trump, I was still so lost and also very drunk. Sure, the windmills are being built, his course is losing money and Michael Forbes still has his land. But back home, President Trump is just teeing off. What advice would you give to Americans? Just keep pissing him off. Just keep him busy by annoying him. Yeah. And then he can't do all the stuff we're worried about. Mm -hmm. An arsehole is always an arsehole. Keep pissing him off and he'll crack up. Yeah. And he'll end up in a padded cell. Michael is right. We can't give up. We have to choose life. Choose pissing him off. Because apparently anyone can do it. A cranky old farmer. A man who barely has a Twitter. Ginger Jesus. Or even some dork with binoculars. Hey, fuck off! Choose being a dick. Choose getting 300 Scots to call him a dick. Oi! Then if all else fails, choose showing your dick. Because he's just some tosser who can't even keep me off his actual golf course. He may have taken our country. But they'll never take our freedom! What freedom? Fuck off. I believe he's like 20 years old, man. Uh, Jesus Christ. Have <laughs> yeah, some respect. Wow, Scotland is mean.